<laughs> At six o'clock, we'll call the council meeting to order of October 11th. Could you call the roll, please? Yeah. Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. First item is approval of the minutes of September 27th, regular session. I, approve, I move to approve the minutes. Second. Seven. Seven. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Resolutions, the first one A is bill number 2021-65, a resolution authorizing city manager to sign a contract with Kim Hoskins Environmental Consulting, LLC, doing business as Kim Heck for industrial pretreatment program service. Mr. Heck. Mr. Heck. <laughs> Mr. Slagle. I looked the wrong way. Mr. Slagle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Kim is an environmental consultant and uh, she has been assisting us with uh, wastewater um, activities um, and which is getting more technical every year and uh, we wish to continue her services to cover the contract and the uh, details, Kenzie Russell. Yes, Mr. mentioned uh, Kim has been providing services to the city uh, on and on for a number of years. Uh, she actually began when she was working for Harner and Schiffer and then went uh, out on her own and has continued to provide us uh, services primarily in the uh, wastewater regulatory field with our effluent limits and with our pre-treatment program. We had her under contract last year for pre-treatment uh, uh, local limits revisions. That ordinance revising those technical limits will come before you at your next meeting. I hope uh, they're out on public notice currently. Uh, the pre-treatment coordinator that the city has had in-house uh, is also a member of the military. It's been gone for a year. There have been some significant changes in the regulations as well as an uh, increase uh, just in the technical knowledge needed. And so uh, we determined that the best thing for the city would be to retain uh, Kim Hoskins uh, for pretreatment, for the technical side of pretreatment services, <coughs> a not to exceed amount of $23,100 for fiscal year, the city fiscal year. Uh, this would be covered under the wastewater budget for professional services. Uh, well, actually, we have line item for the pretreatment uh, fund of $40,000. We're recommending that we proceed with that contract. This is um, as needed, correct? Yes, it is um, as needed, not to exceed. Uh, though uh, there is some regular uh, industrial inspections that will need to be done, some annual uh, things to meet our permit that we know will have to be done. What it, what's left? I know our two biggest pretreatments are, are both closed now. So what's left that we have? Uh, ADM, uh, Cerro Copper, uh, Crown Linen. Uh, the uh, Rise Bakery course is closed at the moment, but uh, anticipating a potential uh, purchase there that would uh, possibly require free treatment. We don't know anything about them at the moment. Uh, Spartan uh, Light Metals and Arch Enterprises are also under the program. Thank you. Moves to the board. I move for first reading bill number 2021-65. Second. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2021-65, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a contract with Kim Hoskins Environmental Consulting, LLC, D-B-A, Kim Heck, for industrial pretreatment program services. I move for a passage. <clears throat> Second. 
Kay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Item B, Bill Number 2021-66, a resolution authorizing city managers to sign a water line easement to Missouri uh, American Water. Mr. Schlegel. Yes, Your Honor. Missouri American Water has requested an easement uh, for a water line, which they have been looking at trying to do for some time. And now that we actually own the property, we can get them in there to do that. This will improve their system, which also is an improvement to service to our <coughs> citizens as well. To uh, cover the details of the easement, Kenzie Russell. Patrick Kelly is here in the audience with us this evening, and if there are questions that uh, he needs to answer, I'm sure he's prepared. <laughs> this uh, water line easement, as uh, mentioned, will help provide some connectivity and some looping that will strengthen the system. The blue line on the map is the uh, approximation of the easement. It does run along the railroad tracks and jogs south around the cell tower and uh, past uh, uh, the other facilities there in the northwest corner and then runs parallel to Green Boulevard down to the end of the property that the city has acquired. Uh, the AP Green, Shamrock, the Bass, uh, Abacus, and uh, MAB property. Uh, there, it is a 25 foot wide permanent easement. Uh, there is a temporary construction easement also attached to the document that uh, will provide uh, for construction. That expires at the end of three years. Uh, if uh, further construction or further access would be needed, then uh, Missouri Hammer and or Missouri American would have to come back and get that uh, permission. Yes. That's that's the board. I move for first reading. Replacement, right? Can I'm sorry. This you're replacing? Yes, and it was there. Yeah, it does replace uh, an older line. Yes. Mm -hmm. I move for reading of uh, bill number twenty twenty one sixty six. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. This is supposed to be city manager, correct? It is mayor. It's, it's mayor. mayor. Okay. All right. You passed the buck on that one. I know it. I tried. <laughs> uh, bill number 202166, a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a water line easement to Missouri American Water. I move for passage of bill number 202166. Second. Yes. 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 Item C, Bill Number 2021-67, resolution authorizing the city manager enter into an agreement with the Help Center to offset operational costs related to providing services to citizens. Mr. Segal. Yes, Your Honor. This uh, do resolution uh, does allow us to enter into an agreement with the Help Center and provide funding to offset uh, part of their operational costs related to providing services to our citizens. The budget has been set and allows for the $5,000 uh, for this. Um, the city has been involved in doing this since 2004. Uh, the support of the Help Center has uh, been at this level. Uh, uh, this would be the fifth year now. And uh, it is the same contract. It's a renewal agreement. And so we would recommend council proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution authorizing us to enter into the agreement. And Phil Iman is present. And Phil, if you have anything to add, you may, or he is available for questions. <coughs> Well, thank you for the opportunity to apply for these, this funding for this report, and thank you for the opportunity to address the council tonight. Uh, I truly feel like we have a partnership that works for both of our organizations, um, our city and the health center, uh, providing support for the citizens of Mexico in, in many different ways, uh, primarily food. But uh, uh, 
we, I, I hope that we never overpromise on what we say we're going to do. And I would, I would hold you to that, that if we don't live up our end to, to address it, uh, at, at, the, at the time that something like that is identified, but we work very hard to uh, meet the needs and, and support uh, people who, who are in need. So uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer, or if you have something you want to follow up with, um, please do um, let me know. How's the, how's the level been over the year with I'm sure you saw probably a little increase yeah. with COVID and stuff, but how's it been the past year? Has, as has as it decreased or? As far uh, as food distribution. Yeah, no. yeah. Actually, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, March, April of 2020, our, our numbers increased. And then as there was a lot of government assistance going out, numbers decreased. And then uh, now our numbers are, are increasing pretty much to pre-pandemic levels. We're in the neighborhood of 900 families per month, which is 2.5, and you know, I think that's 27 or 100 individuals. Now that's for all of our county. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're seeing, we're, we're seeing an uptake now in, in all the services we provide. For reading of bill number 2021-67. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2021-67, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Help Center to offset operational costs related to providing services to citizens. I move for passage of Bill 2021-67. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Other business staff report purchase a wide area rotary mower for the parks maintenance department. Mr. Slagle. Yes, Your Honor. The uh, current budget does allow for the uh, replacement uh, purchase of a uh, mower for the Parks Department. And we have taken bids to cover the uh, details of the bids and what we've received. Chad Shoemaker. Good evening, Council. The 2021-2022 annual budget allows $62,000 purchase of a wide area rotary mower for the Parks and Maintenance Department. Uh, the Parks Department will trade in a 2012 Toro 4000D wide area mower. Requests for bids were sent to 14 vendors and advertisements were placed in Mexico Ledger and posted on the city's website. Bids were received from two vendors with Turfworks and Hazelwood and Grace and made the best bid. Um, you'll see uh, both the bids were slightly uh, above budget. Uh, we expect the remaining $1,370 to be uh, uh, made up in savings on other capital items throughout the year. This is the first capital purchase for this year. Um, if not, we'll make it up with our uh, uh, reserve budget. Uh, we recommend that the council approves the purchase of the tickets and HR 600 wide area mower from Turfworks in Hazelwood, Hazelwood, Missouri. The bid price of $63,370, subject to the bidder's ability to deliver the mower in acceptable length of time. Questions? Are we getting this right now? It'll probably deliver in December, maybe January. Right. Um, but anything that we can get in front of the supply chain right now, we're mm -hmm. trying to get. Yeah, I get you. It's all to your standards, right? I mean, yes. this is what, yeah. Charles, pleasure. I move for the purchase of a, the Jacobson HR 600 wide mower from Turfworks in Hazelwood, Missouri for $63,370 or with the trade in. I guess that's how it would go. Second. Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. William. Yes. Miller. Yes. Next item is the payment of the claims. I move we pay the bills. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Next item is, item is comments from the council. We begin with Mr. Haig. Uh, nothing really, anything to report, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, since I had my surgery earlier in the year, I haven't been able to bike as much. Oh, not at all. So I've done a lot of walking, and we walked Hill Lake, and it looks really good mowed down. It looks really nice out there. So <laughs> why are you laughing, Chad? <laughs> this is many people like it. 
<laughs> you know, it reminds me of Stevens Park out in Columbia when it gets all mowed down like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it looks nice, so. <laughs> Mrs. Briggs. Well, um, we had the uh, play at uh, Presser Hall, Odd Couple, and it was a terrific play. I know I went, I know you went, Chris, and they put a lot of work in that. It was very, very good. Um, and now, after listening to all the dialogue on that, Mike's in, my husband's in the Rudolph, so now I'm listening to Rudolph the Reindeer, so... <laughs> Really? <laughs> so that, anyway, Rudolph sounds like fun. So that's the next thing. Yeah. Mr. Schlegel. Uh, yes, Your Honor. What uh, we'd like to do is I'd like to call Kenzie Russell up. Um, the city did receive a, an award from the uh, Missouri Municipal League for a project that uh, we initiated, what, a year or so ago? And uh, um, and we'll let him tell you about it. And uh, this was the People's Choice Award that we received from from the voting across the state as far as the best project uh, in the state. So, no. this uh, actually we submitted an application and competed for the People's Choice <laughs> Innovation Award from Missouri Municipal League. And this was for our recycling effort uh, with our patching recycler. Uh, we've presented that information to the council in the past, but uh, just to recap, we use old asphalt, and our street division uh, worked out the recipe for how much rejuvenator to add, uh, and the rejuvenator is purchased from Pullet from over at Ladonia. It's a green or uh, corn-based uh, product. Uh, that's part of the byproducts uh, from the ethanol uh, production. And uh, for a total cost of about one third of the cost of cold patching mix, it allows us to do some hot mix patching or permanent patching on an extended season, even after the uh, regular hot mix plants uh, close, or actually it's been very useful for small patches uh, where uh, we don't have to go get a large amount, a whole truckload, and, and have it cool off. If we do get hot mix and it cools off, we can always put it through the recycler as as it is and, and rejuvenate it and use it. So we've reduced waste, we've reduced cost, and we're using green products and recycling. And those were the reasons, I think, that it was a popular uh, project and, and for which we got the award. So give the credit to our street division for uh, thinking outside the box a bit. So. Congratulations. Good job, street Thank department. Good deal. So you're putting this in your office? <laughs> I, uh, I think we'll hang it out at the maintenance center. Oh, yeah? <laughs> the dad's responsible for it and see it. Oh, good. Maybe encourage him to do a little more. <laughs> Okay, at this time we'll take public comments. If you'd like to make a public comment, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and try to hold your comments to three minutes. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Rose Barnes, 1120 East Lafayette Street, Mexico, Missouri. Uh, during the holiday season, we're also considered candy cane night. Um, I come before you to ask if we can get our golf cars, carts, um, able to drive on our city streets under 35 miles of speed zones. I have together, I put together a packet of information, research I've done, and I'd like for you to consider it. Um, I think it would be a great thing for the older people and younger people to be able to take a nice little drive uh, in our neighborhoods, just kind of slow down and enjoy our community. So I'd like to bring this forward to you, if that's okay. okay. Sure. I am nervous. <laughs> There you go. I did highlight some things I thought was important, but the more I highlighted, the more I realized it's all important. There you go. Um, I, I will. I will see that she gets it. Thank you. There you go. You're <coughs> I do feel that as long as it is legal, um, just like a vehicle, which I spent 
uh, almost a thousand dollars get it my legal. Um, I think that it would be a great thing to do if it slowed down um, in our neighborhoods. It would help reduce cost of gasoline for the older people because our fixed incomes. Um, I just think it's something nice that we'd be able to do. A lot of our towns around us are doing it. Um, even the town of O'Fallon, 88,000 people are doing it. Um, there's not been any significant accidents or incidents involving the golf carts, cars in the areas that I have done research in. Um, I know that there has been some in Lake of Arc. Um, I don't know if it was on a golf course or if it was on the street. Um, I do know in Centralia, I think last year, a gentleman fell out of his golf cart. But again, seat belts, I think is the biggest thing, safety belts. Um, lights, blinkers, so we could be seen on the road. Um, and I think it would be better to be seen than bicycles, uh, electric scooters, um, mobile scooters that uh, handicap has to use. God forbid that you know they're safe on the road as well. I would not like anything happen to anybody. And I think everyone deserves to be able to get around and have transportation. Um, some people fall on hardship, can't afford a vehicle. Doing this to allow them if they can pick up a golf cart, put it together, um, or maybe have one that is within the family that they golfed and now they no longer golf. I myself have never golfed, I've never picked up a golf cart and a golf play. I just think it's nice to have one to be able to enjoy the community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What's your address, sir? Uh, address is 1345 Savage Street, right after Mars. Thank you. And, uh, I'm uh, a husband, I have a wife, and I have two beautiful children. And we love our town, born and raised here. I just like the scenery that we have. And uh, being able to slow down instead of going 35 past everything that we pass on a daily, slowing down and seeing the wonders of our town. Okay. And, uh, the golf cart that I bought on, uh, online, frankly, for nothing. I put a lot of money into this uh, electric golf cart, so I have no expense on gas. That's three dollars a gallon for some reason, and the only bill I have for is the electricity department. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Other comments from anybody? If not, a move we adjourn. Take a second. Okay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. William. Yes. Miller. Yes. 